Hello everyone, it's Susan here and um, today I thought I would do a beginner video um, step by step as I've seen in some of the groups uh, a lot of new people asking a lot of questions uh, so I thought I would just do a very simple little pattern today on a um, 3.7 molded stone from uh, a mold that I made um, from a Happy Dotting Company uh, mold. So this is a, a stone that I made and it's made of uh, a gypsum cement. Um, I use hydro stone to make these because it gives a very smooth surface. Uh, there's a, they're a lot stronger than some of the other cements out there that I've tried. And uh, and then the other great thing about these molds by Happy Dotting Company is they have a center mark. And if you decide to um, start making your own molds, uh, this particular mold comes or can come with its own little silicone grid. This is an eight point, uh, well, 16 point marking, um, which you can take it down to eight. Um, there's lots of different uh, stencils out there, so you can do mandalas in lots of different um, numbers of grids. So whether it's, you know, 10, 12, 16, 32, 24, um, and whatever you you want your pattern to look like. So uh, today I'm just going to do a very simple layout, um, for me anyway, simple. I mean, I have been dotting since 2017 approximately. Uh, the other thing I have here is this uh, it's a plastic turntable or turn thing that is very well used, as you can see. I've had this for a very long time. And then I use this a rubber drawer liner on top of it just to make it a little less slippy from my stone. I do not have a link for this as I got it at a local uh, in a store called Industrial Plastics and Paint. Um, so um, you can get some on Amazon. Uh, I have one here that is a larger one that I use for canvases and, it, and they're lazy Susans basically and they spin. So if you want to find something you could do your Google or do your search as a lazy Susan. Anyway, um, and I uh, just going to place that on there. I use two different uh, methods of marking them. Uh, let's see if I can find my other pencil. So this this is a chalk pencil. Um, if you get a chalk pencil or anything, just make sure you're getting one that doesn't have any wax in it for marking uh, or accidentally use your your gem picker because this is a gem picker. <laughs> uh, otherwise, you won't you won't get it off the stone. So I, I use the chalk one or sometimes I'll use uh, a watercolor pencil. I got this in a big package well not big but a package that had a whole bunch of colors at the dollar store super cheap you don't need anything fancy just as long as it it will come off later on okay so I'm just gonna lighten that up and I'll show you the paint colors here in a minute but um now uh, if you don't have stones like this, you can just get yourself something that is um, almost four inches. When I when I first started dotting, I did not use grid lines, so I was taught um, through uh, um, uh, Otana. So Ginger from Otana's patterns were. And there was not any grid lines so in fact I think if you're first starting out um, that is a very good way to do it um, because it really teaches you um, 
to be symmetrical. Um, I think though for, I find for videos, people like to see the markings so they have a better idea on where to place their dots because we all dot a little bit different size. Uh, and that's because of either the, the type of paint you're using uh, or the amount of pressure that you use, uh, or maybe your, your tools are, are slightly different. Um, but that's okay, as long as you can learn how to um, modify your patterns uh, to make them more unique for you. So here we are. And then, um, so the other one that I like to use is this one. I find this one very useful. Um, and I actually use this one the most. Um, <clears throat> so here's a little, a bigger uh, stone. This is four and a half inches and it's another Happy Dotting Company mold. And uh, so I've marked it using this one. And what's nice about this is it's very flexible. So you can put it around a mug or something like that. Um, okay, so when I use chalk, the other thing I do uh, is I wipe it off so that it's a little uh, fainter. And the reason I do this is uh, so I find sometimes the acrylic paint will kind of just move around the line a little bit. So you get a, a slightly misshapen um, design or, or dot, I should say. Okay, now hopefully in this video, I'll try to be as clear as I can. <coughs> Sorry, I really didn't mean to do that. Um, normally I like to just sort of have music and put the, the numbers and everything on the screen for you and not a big chitter chatter. <laughs> um, but I, I really felt the need to do a more detailed tutorial for you. Tutorial for you. Um, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit here. And I'm, I'm trying to speak a little louder for those that um, can't hear what I'm saying. I am a, a gentle speaker, and uh, but my my voice is a little gravelly today, so I'm I'm gonna apologize in advance if you can't hear everything. Um, but do do your best to interpret what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, um, I am using going to start off with using the Americana paint. Uh, I think mostly Americana I'm going to use. Uh, might use um, a full color, color shift. Um, but at the beginning of the video, I'll I'll uh, I'll put down all the colors that I use. Now, just because I'm using this brand or this color doesn't mean you have to do the exact same thing. Look at the color. Um, Look at the color and find something that you have similar. You don't need to go and spend a bunch more money on having the exact same tone at all. Um, I really discourage people from going and buying a whole brand new set of paint. So just use what you have. When you run out, then you can replace it. The other brand that I use a lot for tutorials are the Craft Smart red labeled ones. These are matte, so when they dry, um, your next layer of dots go on really nice. I always seal with a glossy finish, so it doesn't matter that it's matte. The sealant will override that. So Craft Smart is great for beginners. Um, and the reason I say that is because it comes out easy for dotting and it's an inexpensive brand of paint. The negative side to Craft Smart, I find, is um, the pigment is not as pungent as some other brands. Uh, for example, kind of going off topic here, but I like Golden Fluid paint for the opaqueness. They, uh, they will usually do a swatch on the, the front here to show you how opaque they are. So they cover really, really well. And if you have a cheaper brand of red, for instance, like this one, Cherry Cobbler, 
it, and if it goes on and you find it's just not as bright as you'd like, just add two drops of this and it will totally make it that much brighter. So it's just a little cheat. You don't need to go buy a whole pile, just maybe your favorite colors that you use. Uh, so that's one thing you can try. Okay, so we're gonna start with white, any white. And I am using, um, the tool-wise, I'm using, uh, let me just pan out a bit here, uh, Happy Dotting Company tools. These ones I'm using uh, for my videos, and the reason I'm using them for the videos um, is because this number right here on the tools represents millimeter size. So if you have a different company's brand and you know and you have a chart that tells you the size of the tool that you, you're, you're using, you can convert it. So Susan's using a 6.5 millimeter, then you can go and find one of yours that are 6.5. Um, I find that this is probably the easiest way for me to, to teach you. This is just a little caddy or, or container that it, I bought from the Happy Dotting Company to put them in, so they all stand up nice. Um, you can probably find these at dollar stores, uh, or Walmart too also carries these. It just won't have that sticker. So you don't need the sticker. <laughs> um, the other brand that I use day-to-day uh, -day are the DIY Mandela Stone tools. These are excellent, um, but for my tutorials, it's hard to see the number and I didn't want to cover them with paint so you could see them but I use these uh, these are my more my first um, favorite tools to use and the other ones that I have are from the dotting center um, I use this big one mostly be for the really big end <laughs> so I have a variety uh, doesn't mean that you need to you can use um, anything pretty much as long as you know the size um, I have a funny collection of metal tip styluses again all all you need are maybe three or four tools that vary in size so my most frequent used one is this one from happy dotting company and it has a micro stylus on the end so it's really, really, really tiny. Uh, the other one I use the most is a one millimeter. So if you were to lay them out, I would say, you know, like extra small, small. My two millimeter would be my medium. And um, either a three millimeter or a three and a half millimeter would be like a large. The other ones, you know, you if, if you have even three tools that, that have extra small, small, and medium, you can pretty much make any kind of dot. So it doesn't really matter what you have at home. Just know that you can um, just add more paint or less paint to make a different size dot. Okay, let's see if I can scroll in here. The light seems to be a bit dark for some reason, but hopefully you can see. Okay, so for, I think, for beginners, placing that first dot is always the most anxiety bringing. And, um, let me see here. Just have a second here. 12. Okay, I was trying to decide what size my center dot's gonna be. I have to, in my head, convert things. Convert, convert. 12 millimeter. Let's try an eight. Trial and error. <laughs> okay, so when I'm loading up my tool, I like to have a little bit of a, um, it's hard to see here. A little bit hanging off the end. I'm always pretty generous with paint. So, and you want to dot right up and down, not on an angle. And you 
can press really lightly to get an idea if you're in the center. And then if you're happy with that, then you can press all the way down to get the full dot size. And there you go. First dot done. Take a breath. Now, I think it looks like there's a little air bubble there. There. Now, if your paint... Oh, uh, this looks blurry. Hopefully it's not blurry. I'd hate to go through the whole video and it'd be blurry. Maybe I got a fingerprint on the lens. I hope not. Okay. Um, depending on your paint, if you have a little bit of a bump here you can smooth it out with your stylus so that when we put a top dot on there it's nice and smooth okay so now i'm going to go and mix the paint so i'm going to use sort of a light this is called bahama blue sort of a, a tealy blue give it a little shake and that came out really nice. So one of the things I use is a tray like this. And I cover it with a Glad Press and Seal. So when I'm finished dotting and I'm not gonna use any more paint, I can pull it right off and I don't have to go and run it underwater or anything. I'm, I'm on a septic field. I have a septic field, so I just don't wanna put any paint down into my septic tank. So I try wherever I can to do it a different way. Okay, now I'm gonna use uh, one millimeter and just gonna scan in here so you can see. So uh, this is going to be, we're gonna go follow these lines. Now for beginners, um, I always like to start down at the six o'clock spot. I find it easy that I'm not looking over my hand all the time. And then you just take your stat or your tool and you go directly below and do it at six o'clock again. I keep doing the six o'clock to get a really good alignment. So you're looking sideways and up and down and you wanna place it close to your dot. There's about a millimeter space. And then at some point you just want to clean off your tool because your your paint will build up on the tool here and make your dots bigger. So then again at six o'clock. Oops. Small. Just trying to get them all the same size. And the other thing for a beginner, you might want to um, make sure your hand isn't sort of dangling over your rock. Place your pinky on it as a um, brace and then your hand's not gonna move around all over the place. Or you can um, put your other hand beside your rock and use it as a, a, like a little lift. Okay, so there we go. We have the, the first layout. And then, again, clean your tool off. And then we're gonna go in between each of these dots and looking side to side peripherally, you want to place your dot directly in the middle. And when you clean that tool off, you'll see sometimes it's a bit small. So just add a bit more paint. These aren't perfect, but it doesn't matter because in the end, it's going to look really pretty. I'm one of those types of daughters that I don't aim for per perfection. I like 
the colors and the design to come out. I don't worry about imperfect dots ever. Okay, so there's the beginning. I'm just gonna pause here for a second. Okay, I think I totally forgot to mention one thing <clears throat> at the beginning, but I certainly will put it listed at the front of the beginning with all the paint colors, <laughs> is what black I use for the base. Uh, it's really messy here, but I use a Liquitex acrylic uh, mediums. This is a black gesso or gesso, however you'd like to say it. What this does is it primes the surface and it gives tooth, so it's matte. So your paint's gonna stick to it really nicely. And I find it's a good base. I don't have to add another black and one coat covers it really, really well. So that's the product I use there. Sorry, I forgot to mention that at the beginning. Um, I wanna do a three, um, a three or four um, gradient out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add and add a little bit of a darker color to this. So I want to go from a light to a dark. I don't have four different colors. So what I'm going to do is make my own. I'm going to add, I'm going to add the peacock. It's a little bit darker. Hopefully that'll, that'll work or Maybe I'll add teal C, that's a pretty color. It's a little bit darker in hue. On the screen here, it looks more blue, but, hmm. These are where I find it's hard to make decisions sometimes. <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna go with the darker, the teal C, uh, because I don't have one in um, Americana. It's okay to mix brands. I'm just gonna give this a... All right, so I'm gonna add one drop. And then I just have a little mixing stick here. The paint has a little bit of thickness to it right now, maybe because it's been sitting out. If you find your paint is a bit thick, like when you lift it up and you get a peak that doesn't settle down quickly enough, you can add a little bit of pouring medium, um, one drop of pouring medium would fix that. I think this will be all right, but let's just see, I'll add one little tiny drop. <clears throat> Pouring medium also can give a bit of body to your paints too, so um, it's kind of mixing a little nicer. So it's a very subtle bit different or darker. Oh, my throat is so dry today. I didn't sleep very well. I think that's part of it. You know, recovering from Christmas and all the stress of all of that. <laughs> I didn't sleep very well last night. Okay, so you can use the one millimeter and just add more paint to it for the next layer, or you can um, go up in size. That's a nice thing with the Happy Dotting Company. So we'll use a 1.5 millimeter. And now what we're gonna do is a staggered effect. So the space between these two here, we're gonna place it right in between. And everybody kinda does it differently, how depending on their level of dotting experience and comfort. Um, but for teaching, I'm going to place it right there. So then I'm going to skip one and go here and I'll show you why. Oops, it's a little bit bigger. And that's a little bit misshapen now. Things that drive you crazy when you're dotting. See if I can fix this a bit. 
a little bit oval. Oh well, it'll work. So now I've created a space here and I can go in and place my dot right in between. And that helps me to get them all the same size. So I miss one. There you go. So I'll do that all the way around. Uh, I find if you just, when you're beginning, if you just go all the way around without doing it this way, sometimes the spacing can get a little bit off. So it's, it just helps you in the beginning. Now that dot is bugging me. I could take it off or I could just ignore it. <laughs> but I don't have the luxury of time today. So we'll just do it this way. When this dries, it should be subtly darker than the other, the other row. Okay. So you can pause me here and catch up, or if you've managed to stay with me, that's great. In timing, I'm probably dot a little faster than someone just beginning. Now, the one thing you can see is that center dot that was in the stone is starting to come through, and you can see that my alignment uh, was a little bit off, but in the end, it's not going to make any, it's not going to really affect things too much. So I'm going to add another drop of the darker teal C to my paint. Use my mixer and then I'm going to mix that up. So for a gradient I'm just going to gradually darken each color. So that's a nice way that you don't have to go and have a whole bunch of different colors. You just keep adding a drop of paint to your existing color. Mix, mix, mix. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So now you can bump it up to a two millimeter. At some point, it's gonna jump up a lot bigger as the space gets wider. I think the two millimeter should work. And we just repeat the process as the previous rows. So that the space in between them here is, there's a little tiny bit more space on this side, but roughly the same. I mean, this is the way I do it. You'll develop your own technique as you go along. And if anybody that is experienced that wants is dotting along here for fun, you'll know what I mean, right? My fingers are really sore today. I wasn't sure if I'd have the energy to do this today, but I just sort of felt I needed to dot. I find dotting very good for my brain. It takes me away from things that are mulling around in my head. I had a very stressful Christmas as I'm recovering from some medical things and then family things. Uh, need some nights, not good sleep. So dotting I find really helpful to help get some clarity on things as you're dotting away. But my fingers are so sore today. Oh well. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we all have troubles. Okay, so there's our third row. And now, because I'm going to do just four rows, we're going to darken up this next one here. I think I added a bit more than I did with the previous ones to make it stand out a bit more, I guess. Let's see. There we go. 
<clears throat> so that last row was a two millimeter. I think I'm going to need to go the two and a half will be too small, <clears throat> which means I'll have too much space between them. So let's try a three millimeter. And again, we just repeat what we've done here. Anybody has um, questions, you can certainly put them down in the comment section below on my YouTube channel here. Or you can go, um, if you don't want it to be as visible for everybody to see your question, you can go to my Instagram page, Susan Nelson Creations, and you can uh, private message me there. I will always answer questions there and that way it's more private if that's your preference and if you go to Instagram please f follow me along there um, it helps grow my page more visibility same with YouTube here um, by subscribing to youtubers it helps make their um, channels more visible for other people there's just a few little air bubbles that I'm popping here. There. Okay. All right, and speaking of my <coughs> YouTube channel, uh, I just wanted to um, thank four people for some very kind uh, gifts that I got through my PayPal. Naoma. I hope that's how I say your name. Christine, Sharon, and Wanda. Uh, so in this year that came through as a nice little gift to me. I appreciate that so much. Um, I have my YouTube channel set up so that I uh, don't I don't receive any money. Uh, so I do this for free for you. So that was very nice to receive those little gifts. Helps me buy paint here and there. <laughs> so thanks again. All right, so now I'm going to uh, use some white. And I think the seven millimeter size is going to work. And we're going to do eight dots. Um, and we'll do that in the white. So if you're using a grid line, just find a spot at the six o'clock again. And we want it close but not touching. So let's go right there. And we're going to be top dotting these later on. So again, make sure that you, if you've got a lumpy paint, you can smooth it out so that the next layer is nice and smooth on it. Like that. And again, I like to. Uh, for beginners to do the six o'clock placement again for for this type of shape looking peripherally so that you're not like this or like this but right in between these two dots again six o'clock So now you have four. <clears throat> From the four, you can do a design where you place two dots in here, equal spaces, um, or one in the center, and that's what we'll do today. So again, between these two peripherally, and also looking up and down to try and get that perfect symmetry. Whoops, didn't get enough paint there. When you don't get enough paint, you get sort of a squished looking dot. 
It's hard to see on, on the video here, but. So looking straight down from that dot in between these two, you'll see me kind of picking up my rock a little bit like this, and that's to help create um, a completely up and down dotting like this. So if I angle it while I'm dotting, I can see what I'm doing. So it creates that angle. It's just something I do by habit, I guess. And there we go. So um, now that we have the beginning structure of a petal, um, I want to place my first dot here, and this is going to be the biggest dot when I create the tapers to go down each side. <clears throat> I do apologize, I don't know, my throat is so dry today. So for terminology, I'm just going to call this a cherry dot. So meaning that this is the biggest dot here and I'm going to taper down the sides. I find the easiest way to do that is we're using white. I'm using a one millimeter size tool here. I'm just going to place one dot right there. And I'm going to do this all the way around. This is the technique that I find works consistently the best for me. Uh, how you get to your tapers will be up to you and to develop over time. And uh, this first dot and the tapers are going to be, um, you want to have it close to that dot but not touching. So you can see that's about a millimeter. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So you could continue using this tool when you go down the side. Uh, it will, the next dot will be about the same. I'm going to use um, just a step down in size, so a 0.5 millimeter, um, just for my first first go here. So let's see, place it nice and close, but not touching. If the paint's a bit dry, I might not make it all the way around. There, that's a pretty tiny little taper. And you can do all the one side first. Oops. As you can see, I got a bit more paint than I did on the previous taper, but, but that's okay. I think the paint's drying a little bit, so it's just a bit thicker. Remember to wipe off your tools every once in a while to start fresh. Otherwise, that paint builds up and you're going to get bigger dots. See, nice and close, but not touching. And then the space between each dot, try to keep them the same. Knowing that when you get down to this part, you're gonna, um, they're gonna be a little closer together when you place your dot down because the actual dot is smaller. So if you go slow, I'll slow it down a little bit here. When you've done a few thousand, <laughs> it'll be muscle memory. There. Okay, so the reason I do, did all one side first is because if I did over here, I can't see where I'm dotting. So I like to come up to the top and then dot towards myself. 
and that way I'm not dotting blind. Sometimes if my petals are getting bigger, I can do it because I can see a little bit better, but it just depends where I am in the process. Oops, just need a bit more paint there. You find you're probably counting your numbers in your head. And that's that's part of the meditative process where it's forcing your brain to think about other things than some of the things that might be troubling you. It just helps to distract the brain. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna do another row of the tapers to build on this petal. We're gonna go back to the lighter color um, blue. Because I added paint to the other one, I have to re-pour this to get the light color again. And you can see now that that's dried. We have a nice gradient there from light to dark. And the next row, we want it to be a little bit bigger, so that first cherry dot was a one millimeter. The second one, I'm gonna use a two. And I'm gonna going to go again and place that nice dot there and it should be a little bigger than the first one. How did I get that paint on me? At least it's dry. <laughs> Some people have commented, you know, why do I double tap or why do I tap the paint? All I'm doing is trying to get more paint on that dot to make it just a little bit bigger. That's what that is. Okay. Now I'm going to go and grab that smaller one, not the 0.5, but the one millimeter, like I used for that dot. Because I want this row bigger than the first. I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna have to do one dot and then re-dip again. Let's see how that works. Um, this is where grid lines will help you um, keep the space the same between. So if you can see that line right there, if I was to oops, dot down this side, I'm trying to keep nice and close so that that space is equal on either side of that line. I should be able to get a third row of tapers in here. Uh, I'll have enough room, provided that my tool size keeps small. So I'm gonna place one dot and then re-dip. Dip and dot. And then I'm gonna do all the right sides first here. I just wanted to check the spacing on the other one there. You can see my alignment is a little off on this side, but you won't you won't notice in the end. Because you can, if it's really obvious right now, this is where I can try and correct it. Seems these dots are shifted a bit this way from the grid line. But if 
you don't use grid lines, you probably wouldn't notice that. Sometimes placing those marks can mess you up <laughs> more than by not by not using them. That one needs to look a little bit bigger there. I haven't wiped my tool off, so these dots are getting a little bit bigger. Right, so let's go down. Oh, my fingers are sore. I'm trying to keep close because I know I want to do a third, a third layer here. So yeah, this is where I can really see that it's going to be a little tighter between these two. You know, even after all these years of dotting it's still inevitable <laughs> it happens but learning how to um, make adjustments is is where that experience comes in I hope let's see what happens here I think my paint's drying a little bit This design, I'm basing it on one that I did quite some time ago, time ago called Pretty in Pink. So all I'm doing is replicating the pattern I've already made in different colors. And that's the neat thing with Mandela's is you can pick a very standard pattern like this one. It's not original. It's very, very common type design change up the colors and then you have something unique to you okay so there's another row of petals what do you think so far okay taking that color that we ended off with when we did the middle ones the darker color we're going to use that here if you still have it there mixed so it's the really light color, then the darker color, which is the same as this one here. And I'm going to place a bigger dot right there, big cherry dot there. Um, I think my three millimeter will work just fine. So it's at the other end of this one, depending on your tool set. This tool is very well used and dirty. <laughs> okay, so nice big, bigger dot here. I need to add a little bit of medium because it's, the paint feels a little bit dry, hopefully. Hopefully I didn't put too much in here because when you have runny paint, it's even more of a pain than dry paint. If the paint's dry, you start getting misshapen dots. They start going more oval. And if it's too runny, then they start to kiss. They start to bleed into each other. So it's always a... It's always a balance with paint consistency. All right, let's see how this one, that's better. And with Mandela painting, I find it's a lot of sort of repeating elements within a pattern. So unless we're just gonna do another row of tapers and it should meet in the middle there. You could stop here and, you know, you could do a swoosh into the center. You know, lots of ways to do it. So I'm taking that medium size to the two millimeter. This one happens to have a bit of a bend in it. I guess all that does is it allows you to see your tool a little better, but
Yeah, I'm just going to see how they meet. There. Now, if you dot a little bigger, you might find that you've run out of space. You know, just, you just kind of, you can stop like that. And then the other one joins in. I'm able to see my dots a little bit better here now. So I'm dotting on the other side. Let's see how that almost, oops, almost will touch in there. Whoa, too much paint. I think that one, let's see here. I had a bit more room in this one. So you can see I kind of took the corner a little wider <clears throat> to fill in that space. That's where you can kind of cheat a little bit. <laughs> like I said before, I'm not a perfectionist with my dotting. I envy those that have those absolutely perfect dots, but that's not me. It's a little tighter in this one. <laughs> that was close. And there we have it. it. Looks really pretty now. So the next paint that we're going to use once this stops shaking, uh -huh. okay, is um, it's by Folk Art, and it's Color Shift series, and this is Orchid Flash, and you can see it has a pinky, goldy undertone, like it shifts. For beginners, this one can be a little challenging to use. And let's see if I can show you here on the tray. Because it's a little bit stringy. I don't know if you can see that. It has a, a stringy effect. Or a consistency, I would say. And as a beginner, it can be a little frustrating because when you dot down if you happen to pull your tool to the side, you're going to get a little string go across. So always dot straight up and down and slow. If you hold it, it will disconnect eventually. So just pull up straight up and down really slow. Take your time with this one. It's, it is a pain. However, you do get such a beautiful color from it. You, you won't regret the colors that come out of it. So we're gonna use that one. And, oh, sorry. And this is the other one we'll use is the Aqua Flash. So what I'm going to do is if we're gonna place a dot here to set us up for another little petal in this space here. And we are going to repeat this whole process, but with more of the um, 
orchid colors, um, wild orchid or purple pizzazz. Um, and that's a very complementary color to the teals. So we're just going to place a little dot here and what that will do is bring the petal out further this way. If I place this big white dot here, it will be crammed in too close. Uh, so it'll just help pull, pull it out. And uh, we can use, can use a three millimeter. You can also use a three millimeter in a in your dotting stylus. Both will work. And I usually like to get quite a bit of paint on this tool for with this paint brand. So I place it down and I pull straight up. And there you have it. On the bigger dots sizes with this paint, you can layer it up to get a bit more of a round look. It looks very pretty. I'll show you that when we get there. So place the paint and pull up slow. I can add a bit more paint to that one, I think. And sometimes I even twirl it to disconnect that little string that happens. All I'm doing here is just adding more paint to that dot without making the dot bigger. Sort of like just putting a little blop on top of it, gent very gently. So, I don't know if you can see, so this one I just placed, it has a little button compared to the other ones. So by adding just a smidgen more paint to it, it kind of fills it in. So it's a fuller dot. And you see how pretty those colors look side by side? Complementary. Well, I'd have to look at the color wheel to see if they're truly a complementary or not, but they look good together. That's all I care. <laughs> well, I'm speeding up here a little bit. Now my dot got a little bit too big. Clean my tool off. I'm not going to wipe it off. I'm just going to leave it. It's And that one is more oval shaped because of the way I let my tool go. Bad girl. There we go. It just tells me I need to slow down. There you have it. I think there's one there that's got an air bubble. Try and grab that air bubble before it dries. There. So that was a three millimeter. Now I'm going to do the same size dot here, which was a seven. I said before it's just replicating what we've already done but this will be a different color probably could have been a bit smaller with these white dots you can adjust it accordingly for you if you find that you're a bigger daughter if you know yourself well Instead of a seven millimeter, you know, these could have been more maybe like a six millimeter. And that way you can get all three rows in there. Hopefully I'm not rambling too much for you guys. I know I don't like listening to people ramble. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my paint's been sitting out and I'm getting misshapen dots, so it's a little bit dry. But it'll be all right. I'm 
Okay, so we're just going to repeat what we did here before. One millimeter in the white. And then the smaller tool, 0.5 millimeter. Hopefully you're finding this, uh, if you're a beginner, doable. If you're um, finding this still a bit challenging, let me know and I can do an even more basic pattern. I take a lot of things for granted having the experience that I do. I forget what it's like to be a beginner. So you can comment and let me know if there's something you need to practice or some tips. I do have a video called My Favorite Things, which I will show you things that I like to use. It's handy. Let's see if I can get that little white off. Letters. Before I seal my rocks, I will always go in and clean everything up, take off the grid lines, add black paint to little splatters and whatnot to make it pretty. Yeah, I've got quite a few videos in my collection now. And so just feel free to scroll through and find something you like. You can modify it, make it easier for yourself, but not. Okay, so now we're going to go into the wild orchid, which is like a, it's quite purple. Oops, that didn't help. There you can see the color. Give that a little shake. So it's the lighter of the two that I have here. Now that first one was a one millimeter, so now I'm just gonna bring that up to a two millimeter. These videos I make for you, you can sell the product that you've made from my videos. If you're, you're getting good and you have a market, you can sell my 
designs that you've painted. The only thing that you cannot do is take screenshots of my art and sell or take it as, you know, something you've painted. So that's where the copyright comes in. My images and my personal art. But things that you've created, you know, I don't expect that you tag me as pattern by Susan Nelson. But uh, just, there you go. You can certainly sell your art when you get good. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm using the one millimeter, trying to get the right position because now I'm kind of down the side of my art here. So I'm going to place one dot and then taper. One dot and then taper. One dot and then taper. There's a lot of really good um, Mandela groups on Facebook. Uh, there's beginner ones that have lots of tips. And I will try and share the video link into some of these groups for this particular video because it is a big beginner one. Another group that I am a part of is uh, Christina's group, AU Meditation. And that's a great place to share your creations. I live in Victoria, BC, Canada. And I'm one of the admins on a group called Vancouver Island Painted Rocks. But even though it says it's Vancouver Island, you're certainly welcome to join in the group to see all that we do. We do more than mandalas. The group is full of rock painters. And we've got lots of uh, tutorials in our guides there. So we uh, have links to tutorials. So if you need inspiration. Um, yeah, it's my group. I also am uh, an admin on a group I created. It's uh, Vancouver Island or South Van Vancouver Island. What is it? South Vancouver Island Traveling Canvas. Ah, uh, no. Traveling Canvas, South Vancouver Island. My island is really, really big. It's much bigger than people realize. It took me six hours to drive to the very end of it in Port Hardy. So that's why I have to put South Vancouver Island. So the traveling canvas, um, people need to be able to pick it up and do their little section in the canvas. So that's why I had to put that in there. It'd be hard to pick it up in Port Hardy. If it was a smaller canvas, I suppose we could mail them. <laughs> but those are fun. When you get really good, you can always create your own group and where you live and can do a community canvas it's fun to do there we go all right so now we're just going to do like what we did here that third color or second color and uh, I'm gonna do purple pizzazz because it's just a bit deeper than that one so you just need a tone that's just a, a little bit darker where it gets a little tricky for a new person is to angle your rock so that you can work on it without getting your fingers in it. So I find if I just tip it up and hold on to this, and that's why I have that shelf liner on there so the rock doesn't slip away. 
All right, this is a three millimeter. Place a bigger dot there. For some reason that's not big, so I'm just gonna make it bigger. There. That's how you make a dot bigger. Just keep plunking the paint down. There. Mm, such a pretty purple. I like this one. This is the two millimeter. I'm going to place a dot and then taper. And then just stop when you, you run out of room. Okay. Place a dot and then taper. dot and then taper Anybody make New Year's resolutions every year? Anybody? I think I want to eat less carbs and less chocolate. <laughs> I uh, had my I had a surgery on November the tenth, and uh, it required me to do nothing. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so between. Christmas and doing nothing. I think I've gained a couple of pounds here. So maybe maybe that's what I'll work on in January. What about you guys? So hard at Christmas with all those tempting cookies and things that people bring you. And also being 54 Things don't fall off like they do when they're 20. Isn't that a pain? Life can be cruel, can't it? <laughs> oh, this one I had a little more room. Could you imagine being 20 and be able to know what we know now? I wonder what life would be like. Would we make the same choices? I don't know. Things to ponder. There we go. Last one. This one's a bit small. Okay, there we go. Looks like I got a little splotch there. Let's see if that'll come off. That was easy. Okay, now then what we're going to do is we're going to do a little swoosh into this little space just for a little decoration. And we're going to use the purple here first, and then the teal. 
And the reason I do it that way is so that the outer swoosh here will be of this color. So when they're side by side, okay? And let me get something here, hang on. I'm just gonna show you on this here how I'm going to do this swoosh. So you take your stylus and you do a dot like that. And then you can just drag it up like that. I have a couple of, I have one video or two videos on doing swooshes. If you want to do a curved swoosh, just dot it up and then you can do a curved swoosh like that. So this is sort of the shape that we're gonna do on this mandala here. Um, so, bring this back. And I'm going to do that purple pizzazz. And it's going to be, if you look at the bottom of these two dots, it's going to be in the center and we're gonna go straight up. When you pull it up, you wanna stop before you hit that. Um, we'll be straight up here. I'm thinking I might wanna put a little bit of detail right here first. Yeah, let's do two dots in there first before we do the swoosh. Sometimes I like to change my mind. <laughs> so this same color, um, I'm using the two millimeter tool and we're gonna place two dots, one here. So you can see it's to the side of that dot there and one here. Like that. So it's called a double dot. Two side by side. If you look at my work and my own designs, I don't like a lot of negative space. I wouldn't say I don't like it. I just don't gravitate to that dotting style of having a lot of background color come through. So this is why I'm probably <laughs> feeling the need to do these double dots just to, to fill in some of this negative space. Uh, you don't have to. You do what's comfortable for you and what aesthetically you're drawn to. I'm just tapping here just to get these dots the same size. Remember this stringy paint pulls straight up. Yeah, your own style will come through in time on what what you're drawn to, what you like to create. Even color palettes, some artists you'll notice have the very similar color palette every time they paint. Tones might change, but that's what they're drawn to. Some people like to dot it all in the bright reds, oranges, and yellows. And you'll see that through all their designs. I don't know, I guess I still like to experiment. When we finish these swooshes, we're gonna go in and do some top dots on those white dots there. So that's what will be next. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna swoosh, hopefully here. Um, little trick with swooshes, if your paint has a little bit more, um, I don't wanna use the word runny, but it's a little bit more fluid. So I'm just, I added a drop of pouring medium 
to my mixture here, as you can see, just, just to make it a little bit more runny. You'll get a little bit more uh, distance in your tail if you do that. If you find it's not you know, moving as well, that's probably the paint might be a little bit on the drier side. Okay. Yeah, what am I doing? I'm doing purple first. Almost messed up. Almost messed up. All right, purple pizzazz, the darker purple. Now I'm just going to do this with one tool, one stroke. Well, I, like this. Just like that. You can get, you can do your dot and switch tools and use a smaller one. But for this one, this is what I'm going to do. It's one dot just to load up the paint and then swoosh straight. Just like that. Place your dot, get more paint, and then just drag it up. Now I did hit the edge of that. When it's dry, I can touch that up if I felt the need to do that. Don't do it when it's wet. <laughs> Otherwise you get a mess. was a little wavy. When I have a bit of pain in my hands, it's sometimes hard to get things to go really smoothly. There's one swoosh and then we're just going to do that tealy color on either side of that. So I'm just going to come up just a little bit on the side, like that. Yeah, these are like beginner swooshes, so they're just very simple little ones that you can do. Nothing complicated, no switching tools, nothing fancy. <laughs> Another little sploosh. I could probably have used a smaller size tool here, but. All right. That one got a little chubby there. I call that the slug look, where it doesn't taper down. You, if it really bothered you, something like that, you could always just go in with a little bit of black paint at the end, just to thin it out, rather than removing it. Okay, so there's our little swooshes. I have enough room, I could always put a, th a third one in there, but I'm gonna, or yeah, a third, but I'm not. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna do some center dots. If you're really confident uh, with your dotting, uh, you can come in and put little dots in these spaces here. Uh, you'd want to use a very small tip stylus. You could use white. 
uh, or you could use the lighter of, of these here. And what you can do, oh, I'm a bit shaky. There, that's what you could do. Again, Susan doesn't like negative space, so she has to fill it all in. <laughs> It's totally optional. As you can see I'm kind of tapering it as the space gets smaller. If you've used cones, you could use cones to do this, get those tiny little dots. This is just my quick way to do it. I'm a bit shaky, so it's not perfect. So you can I don't know if you can see on the screen, I'm holding my hand when I do it. I can pan out a bit here. So I'm holding my hand and my thumb just to brace a bit of the shaking that's going on in my hand. Remember to clean your tool. I also use a magnifying lamp quite frequently for these tiny dots. My eyes aren't fabulous, so the magnifier really helps. Just attaches onto the desk with a light. Probably one of my best purchases. there. There we go. All right, now let's do that center dot. Uh, zoom in. I'm using a six millimeter. I'm going to get lots of paint here. My brush or my tool has a bit of a tail on it, you can see there. And I'm using my hand again to brace. And as I'm laying the paint down, I'm watching it spread on either side of the tool and make minor adjustments um, to get it completely center. So I'm not being quick. I'm just letting the paint squish out from under the tool. I'm not pressing down very hard. I'm just letting the paint. And I'm adding more paint because I like a really full dot. So I'm not pressing down. I'm just letting the paint come off the tip of the tool in, in the center there. So now I've mounded the paint. Let's see if I can get you to see that. So now that you see it's mounded, that will settle down and create a nice shape. It takes practice. Practice, practice. <laughs> so I'm going to put the same color here and I'm going to use the aqua on these ones. I think I used, I'm trying to remember the size of that dot. This one I think I need just to come down a bit. Let's try, try five. I 
as you get more experienced with this, <clears throat> you can make the center dot even bigger so that you have just a little rim of white. That takes a lot of a lot of practice. Let's add a bit more there. Sorry, you probably can't see that when I'm doing it. Let's see if I can change the angle here. Is that any better? <laughs> I'm just going to mound up a bit more paint. <clears throat> so I'm watching all edges to try and get that as centered as possible. If it's coming out one side a bit more, then I'll push the paint to the other side. I don't know, what do you think? You like it? That one's not as centered as the other ones, but very min minimal amount. Not going to worry about it. If it's really off, then I can just wipe it off with my Q-tip. Just repeat that process on the purple one here with the aqua flash. Aqua flash is a little more transparent than the orchid one, so I always definitely pile it up a little bit more. We are getting on a curve, so depending on your paint, just be careful about how much paint you add because it might slip down a bit. Well, this Happy Dotting Company mold is is not as curved as some other ones like dome shapes. Those are definitely more challenging. there you have it. All done. Let's wipe my tool off here. I'm going to cover my paint. There we go. So I'm going to let this dry for a couple hours. 
and then uh, we'll come back and we'll take off the grid lines and then I'll show you what I use to seal um, and how I finish these off to make them uh, have a nice finished look. The molded stones, uh, let me grab one here, when you make them uh, will have some very fine little um, bubbles on the bottom if I don't sand them fully and clean, you know, make it really nice. Um, I will use a felt or velvet type um, thing to place on the bottom so when it touches on the surface it's not going to scratch. So there's things you can do to cover up that. Of course that one I made fits that size rock, I think. And this is a adhesive backing on this one. You can find these. Some Michaels, they used to carry them, the felt. This one is a, a velvet type finish on it, so it's it doesn't have any sh very little shine to it. Very, it's very soft. So that'll finish the bottom of this. But anyway, we'll come back one step at a time here. Okay, we're nice and dry, and I've just got a little silicone disc that I'm going to use just to raise this up just a little bit. You could use anything, it's just so that I can get underneath here a little bit. Um, I like to use uh, just a lint-free lint cloth from um, when you buy glasses or glass cleaning kit. There's no lint. And I just get it wet, damp. And I just, very gently, I'm not rubbing, just going over top of where the grid lines are, just to clean it. You can use a Q-tip, a wet, a wet Q-tip. I just find this so much quicker. You gotta make sure your paint is clean or dry. Obviously, <laughs> otherwise you're gonna spread it everywhere. Okay, and like that, it's all cleaned up from the grid lines. I don't think I can see any. And now I'm just gonna do a couple little spots with black paint where just like that just a very small little detail brush Let that dry for a sec. All right, everything is touched up and ready to be sealed. I'm choosing to use um, Duraclear Gloss Varnish by Deco Art Americana. I find I like this the best for my Mandela stones that stay indoors. I do three uh, thin coats and and I'll do the underside as well. So I'll just show you the one coat and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. So I just do a little drop in the middle. I get a very soft bristled brush and I just fan it out. Sorry if I sound funny, I have a cat sitting on my head. <laughs> and you can guess which one that is. That would be Winston. He's literally on my head. I look like I have one of those hats with the furry tail on it. 
I'd show you, but I don't have my uh, TV face on right now. <laughs> okay. All right, so there's one coat. Pretty simple. It doesn't look shiny yet, but it will. You just wait. And we'll come back in a few. Okay, here's three coats. Yeah, that looks pretty shiny. And I only put two coats on the bottom because I'm going to put this adhesive on backing. Oops. So there's the vel uh, velour or velvet. Shoot, I don't know, whatever you call that stuff. <laughs> And I didn't sign this one, but that's all right. I'm just going to put that on like that. So now that's just super soft. So when it sits on a wood table, it's not going to make any scratch noises. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this as a beginner, or if you are an established daughter already, this could be something else to do. And uh, we'll see what's next. Happy New Year, everybody. And thanks again for watching. And please subscribe to my channel so that uh, you'll help me grow my, grow, grow my page and, and channel. Much appreciated. Thanks a lot.